coming to investigating female infertility there are few things that we check when a lady reports with at least trying for one year and has failed to conceive and the prime and most important among them is a hormonal test now hormonal tests are several some have to be done on day 2 preferably and there are others which can be done random at any point of the cycle the day 2 or the second day of menses test would include a baseline fsh lh and estradiol testing now these are the hormones that are secreted from the brain for the normal functioning of the ovaries now there are other hormones that affect the ovarian function which include a serum prolactin a thyroid hormone test and a amh test now amh or anti mullerian hormone testing is a test to know the ovarian reserve it is a test to identify where do we stand as far as the ovarian reserve of the lady is considered so if the reserve is low it's important to fast track the treatment process but if the reserve is normal or on the higher side of normal then we can go slow and give some time for the couple to try naturally or try couple of iois before venturing into any advanced treatment once the hormones are ascertained that they are normal Uh, it's also important to know whether the lady is ovulating correctly now ovulation tests can be done by a serum progesterone testing in the mid luteal phase that is the second half of the cycle somewhere on the day 21 of the cycle it can also be done by uh, follicular monitoring and tracking the ovulation that is a scan on day 2 and then day 10 to see if she is developing the egg correctly releasing it correctly this helps us ascertain that the ovulation is happening properly it could also be checked by a test called as ovulation kit test these are tests simple urine test which the lady can do it herself starting from the day 13 of her cycle to see whether the ovulation kit comes positive somewhere around day 15 for a person who is having a regular 30 day cycle however if the cycle duration is shorter say 28 days 24 days then it's important that we start doing ovulation kit tests also much earlier once we are certain that the ovulation is appropriate we can move on to the other tests it's very important and vital that the couple always investigate together so after knowing that the hormones are normal it's important to also ascertain that the husband is fine this can be done by a simple semen analysis to make sure that the sperm count motility morphology is all in sync and normal so that once we ascertain that we can move to the next test for the lady ultrasound scanning in female infertility is a very important test and is a baseline test at the first visit itself the doctor may suggest doing an ultrasound because this helps in assessing whether the uterus is normal whether the endometrium that helps in implantation is normal whether the ovaries are normal and if there are any problems around the uterus can be picked up easily with an ultrasound it is a non invasive test nowadays transvaginal ultrasound is considered as the best way because it is closer to the organs that is the uterus and the ovaries and gives a fantastic view of the ovaries to assess the ovarian condition and the uterine condition ultrasound also helps us pick a plot of hormonal disturbances too for example polycystic ovaries is easily picked up under ultrasound because this helps us know the number of andro follicles in the ovary and the way they look and it helps in diagnosis of PCOS and uh, ultrasound also helps in diagnosis of endometriotic cysts about fibroid uterus if there is adenomyosis in the uterus if there are any structural abnormalities of the uterus like a septum or ashman syndrome there is adhesions inside the uterus there are several abnormalities that can be picked and if the ultrasound is normal it's extremely reassuring we can move to the next test for the lady which would include a test of the fallopian tubes because as i told you before fallopian tubes are the structures that help in carrying the egg from the ovary to the uterus and for the egg movement in such a way fallopian tubes should be open and properly functional now testing the fallopian tubes there are several ways one is a ultrasound based test which is called as sonosalpingogram the second one is a x-ray based test which is called as hysterosalpingogram and the last in the gold standard is a laparoscopy we need to remember that what we are testing in a fallopian tube test is only for patency it doesn't help us know whether the tubes are functional very rarely passed infections on the tubes can cause bald tubes with no villi within it which can actually be a cause for no pregnancy happening naturally but however a patent tubes should be taken as normal and lady should be given some more time for a natural conception unless there are pressing factors like low amh or any other abnormality in the pelvis now sonosalpingogram which is a ultrasound based test what is done here is fluid is pushed inside the uterine cavity which flows and fills up the hole of the uterus and then goes into the tubes and spills out now this is tracked on an ultrasound and then we report it has okay tube, both tubes are open or unilaterally one is open or both are open and good 
Similarly, a HSG. HSG, a radio opaque dye is passed and an X ray clicked. At the time, the dye passes through the tube and fills with the uterus too. Now, this helps not only to ascertain that the tubes are fine, but also helps in knowing whether the uterine cavity is normal. Because sometimes, if there is a septum or a polyp, there can be shadows which can be picked up on these tests. Last but not the least, and the gold standard for tubal testing is called as laparoscopy. The only disadvantage of a laparoscopy is the fact that it becomes a mini surgery. It involves a couple of cuts on the tummy, wherein you check the outside of the uterus also, you check the inside of the uterus also. Now, the inside of the uterus is checked by something called as hysteroscopy. We pass in a camera into the uterine cavity cavity is normal, if the tubal openings are normal, these tubal openings are called as ostea, they are normal and opening correctly and at the same time we pass a dye and check through the laparoscope if the dye is flowing out correctly. This helps not only knowing the tubal patency, it also picks up if there are any abnormalities outside the uterus. For example, if the tube has flimsy additions or major additions, if there are endometriosis which is not picked up by a scan, can be picked up by a laparoscopy. The only flip side of a distal laparoscopy is that it becomes a surgery, it's a daycare surgery and needs an invasion and small cuts can be there on the tummy. However, laparoscopy becomes a main line of treatment and testing if in case there are other coexisting diseases. For example, along with tubal testing, you want to remove a fibroid or in an ultrasound you found that there is an endometriotic cyst. So you want to test the tubes and also remove the cyst. So it can be achieved at the same time. However, laparoscopy should be remembered that is a gold standard. So if you find something abnormal in a scan based testing or a x-ray based testing, you would still resort to laparoscopy to confirm the finding.